Hi, I'm Brad Beefus, and today I'll be demonstrating some basic tying techniques to get you started on your fly tying journey. My philosophy with teaching fly tying is to teach techniques rather than patterns so that you can tie a variety or a multitude of different patterns once you've mastered the techniques that we cover in the show today rather than just one specific pattern type. I've already got the first fly that we're going to be doing in the vise, uh, which is a brassy. And for the brassy, we'll be using uh, uh, copper wire to do the abdomen or the body of the fly. And we'll be working with peacock curl to do the thorax of the fly. Before we actually start doing our tying, we'll put a hook in the vise here. And I'll be working with a, a standard 1x long nymph hook. And in terms of our placement of the hook into the jaws of the vise, we want to make sure that we keep the shank of the hook elevated somewhat from the tips of the jaws and also keep the shank of the, the hook so that it's parallel with our tabletop or just slightly elevated upwards so that our materials and our thread aren't trying to slide off or, or fall off the eye of the hook. I also want to cover just some basic points of the hook, um, some reference points that you can use to help with uh, placement of materials as well as proportions as you're tying. Um, we'll just run through some basic nomenclature on the hook. Uh, first we have the, the eye of the hook right up here and then the shank of the hook um, running the, the level portion of the, the hook before it starts into the bend and then the barb and the point of the hook. Um, it's also um, a good idea to help keep the, the barb and the point out of the tips of the jaws um, the, just to help with, with decreasing the risk of fracturing the hook at the barb or weakening that hook. Um, in terms of some reference points on the hook that I'll work with a lot throughout the, the show today is uh, first and foremost the, the starting point or what I refer to as the starting point. If we draw a line directly up from the barb of the hook to the shank, so basically this point right where the, the bend of the hook begins is what I refer to as the starting point. And this is where we'll have no materials being tied onto the hook or wrapped onto the hook beyond that point. The other reference point that I work with a lot throughout the show is uh, what I refer to as the index point. And the index point is, is half the distance of the eye of the hook behind the eye. So if we look at from where the eye is attached to the shank to out here to the front of it, that, that distance, uh, take half of that behind the eye of the hook on the shank is what I refer to again as the index point. No, none of our materials will go beyond the index point. Um, we'll, we'll wrap to that point and only thread uh, will be used up there. By, by having a reference point at that, that spot on the hook will, will help aid you in not crowding the eye and making sure that you have enough room uh, to whip finish and, and complete the fly without a lot of bulk up there. Some of the basic tools that we'll be working with today will be uh, bobbin um, and all the tools that I'm showing you are from the Stonefly Tool Company. Um, a bobbin is just a thread tensioning device or a thread holder um, so that as we tie materials on the hook we can let go of the bobbin and, and it will hang and keep tension without our thread unraveling. Um, we'll also be working with scissors and there's a, a variety of different scissors available. Stonefly Tool Company has a, a, a very nice pair of scissors um, with a good fine tip. They're also a serrated jaw um, so that allows you to, to make very precision cuts. Um, the scissors, it's important to have something that fits comfortably in your hand um, and also something that's got a, a, a large enough loop that you can get your fingers in and out of easily. Uh, we'll also work with a, a bodkin or a dubbing needle and this is uh, again basically just a, a needle set into a handle. We'll use this for applying uh, cements uh, and picking out various types of materials on, on our hooks and our flies as we're tying. And then Lastly, uh, our, another basic tool that we'll use with every fly um, is a whip finish tool. And this, this can either be done by hand. Um, I certainly recommend a whip finish tool for, for completing a, a, uh, a much tighter, uh, more consistent knot with each fly. Now let's go ahead and start wrapping some thread on the hook here. With the brassy, our proportions, um, we're, we're going to be working within the, the starting point to the index point or, or almost up to the eye of the hook, um, which is what I refer to as the length of the shank. And that's our usable portion of the hook to tie our fly on. When I start my thread, I'm going to start about a third of the way behind the eye of the hook. And this will be the, the junction of where the, the abdomen 
um, or the body of the fly meets the thorax, or where our wire, copper wire stops and where our peacock curl begins. The first thing that we'll tie on the hook will be our, our copper wire. Um, this is a, a ultra wire, and it comes in a variety of different colors. We're going to work with just a standard copper color, and we'll take a, a short length of this, uh, maybe five or six inches of it, and typically the size that I work with most with the wire, um, this is their, what they refer to as their brassy size. And in, in tying this on the hook, um, wire is a, is a hard, slick material and is sometimes difficult to place at a specific point on the hook. If I lay it right on top of the hook shank and try and wrap over this to catch that, you'll see how the thread um, pushes or moves that material around the, the shank of the hook. So to help lock this and, and be more precise with where we're placing it, I'm going to bring the wire in on the underside of the hook shank in front of my thread at a slight angle to the hook. And then even with fairly moderate tension on your thread, we'll take two or three wraps and that wire will stay put at that one specific point. This little tag piece um, that's left, rather than coming in with our scissors and, and dulling those fine tips on our scissors, if we just pull back on the wire real slowly, we can pull that back so that the tip of the wire is right at that two-thirds, one-third point, um, again, which is where our abdomen and thorax will be joining. We'll continue to wrap back over the, the wire, and we're going to wrap back to our starting point. Because this is, a, again, a harder material and it's not really conforming to what's underneath it as we wrap it forward on the hook, we want to make sure that that, that underbody of thread or our tie-in area stays as smooth as possible. So we'll wind back to the starting point, and then I'm going to bring my thread forward back up to that two-thirds, one-third point. And we'll leave the thread hanging there. Now we can begin to wrap the copper wire. And as we wrap, each turn of this we want to place right in front of the previous wrap. And we can keep fairly moderate tension on the, on the wire as we wrap it forward. We want that body to be good and tight. And by slightly pulling back towards your previous wrap, it'll allow you to keep those, those wraps, uh, again, just compressed right in front of the, the previous wrap. And you really shouldn't see any thread showing through. So this, a, a good practice technique is using a, a darker colored thread, like I have black on there right now, um, something that's contrasting the color to your wire color um, so that you can see any of those, those little voids or gaps that you might have. Um, to allow you to, to again, practice this t technique so that you get better consistency with your bodies. And the brassy, this is a, a good larva imitation. Um, this is something that allows you to imitate little midge larva or maybe a caddis larva. Um, so again, a, a variety of different colors can be tied in this and a variety of different sizes. Um, but it's a, a good pattern to just teach you um, basic tie-in and basic wrapping techniques. Now that I've got the, the abdomen wrapped on the fly and I'm ready to tie off the, the wire, I'll switch hands uh, with my material and grab the bobbin in my opposite hand and I'll make three or four tight wraps crossing over the material um, and, and trapping it to the hook. And rather than, than trimming this again with my scissors and dulling the, the tips on my scissors with wire, if you put, place some tension on the wire and just twist it, rotate it in, the, in a close little circle, it'll, it'll break off and give you a nice flush um, tie-off point. Advance my thread right back in front of the, the wire where we've tied that off. And next we're going to get some peacock curl, which we'll use for the thorax. And I'm going to take two or three pieces of the peacock, and we'll just pull that out. This happens to be strung peacock curl. And we will trim the, the tips of the peacock curl to help even those up. Um, I like to tie peacock in by the tips of the quill so that I'm working with a smaller diameter um, part of the stem. It, the, the hurl will wrap more full. The next technique that we're going to learn for tying this in will be um, a pinch loop, which will allow us, again, to position a material or, or tie a material on the hook at a very specific point. Uh, again, because the, the peacock is fairly soft and it will move around, the, the stems are fairly soft, your thread will, if we want to set this in right on top of the hook shank, your thread will chase that and, and push it around. So we can use, again, the pinch loop. I'm going to grasp the material and set my fingers right where the, the, the abdomen and the thorax are going to meet. 
lift my thread perpendicular to the hook shank and just slide the thread back into my fingertips and pinch the thread. Bring the thread down on the, on the back side of the hook and then just with a, a quick pull we can slide that thread loop out of our fingertips and position that or, or trap the hurl right on top of the hook shank. Again we have the the tips of the hurl out here which we can come in and either trim those off but by trimming them before we set them on it allows us once we get a couple of, of loose wraps we can pull back on the hurl and draw that back behind our index point and then go ahead and continue to to tie the material down and get it firmly attached to the hook shank. Now we're ready to wrap our peacock hurl. We'll start right at that two-thirds, one-third point, right where our copper wire is ended, and we'll keep light pressure. These are, are fairly delicate um, stems, and we, if we pull too hard, they will break. So we want to keep light pressure on there, but again, maintaining some, some tension to them so that the, the three strands will stay together. We'll wind forward to that index point, again, which is about a half an eye's length behind the eye. We'll switch hands, and again, we'll take our opposite hand, and take two or three wraps over the hurl to trap that to the hook and hold it in place. Because peacock hurl stems are, are fairly fragile, um, rather than coming in and trimming this, and this is a, a reasonably fuzzy material, uh, which sometimes will leave a little bit of, of fuzz and, and fiber, material fiber right up by the eye of the hook, um, we can grab those three strands uh, of hurl and put just a little bit of, of slack into them. And we're going to pull back in just a quick um, motion after we put that slack and I get, I'll keep some tension on my bobbin. I'll be holding onto my bobbin keeping my thread tight so that the material doesn't slip out of our thread and unravel. So we'll grab those three, we'll put a little loose loop and we'll pull straight back. Sometimes they don't necessarily want to cooperate. We've got one stray which will come in and again this is where a, a pair of uh, real fine tip scissors are, are real beneficial to come in and, and uh, do that close work. We can take a couple more wraps of thread just to help clean up the, the head area before we actually do our whip finish to complete the fly. Then we'll go into our, our whip finish and with the whip finish, um, generally these come with an instruction sheet on how to use them um, and, and I'm sure your local fly shop will be more than willing to help you understand the, the, um, the tool. We'll go ahead and get this hooked up onto our, our thread and you can do whip finishes by hand, um, but I think a, a using a tool will give you better consistency um, time and time again with uh, reproducing a good tight knot to help finish your fly off. And we'll take three or four wraps to help or to, to wind the knot and, and complete the, the fly here. Remove the tool and pull this knot down tight. And it's always a good idea, um, whether you're doing a hand wet finish or wet finishing with the tool, make sure that the knot's good and snug before you come in and trim off the, the thread. We'll come in and trim that right up flush against the side of the head. Now we'll go ahead and, and just to finish this off, we'll apply a little bit of head cement. Uh, there's a variety of different types of cements. I like to work with a, a, a real thin cement that's penetrating on the heads of the fly. And we'll take our dubbing needle or our bodkin and come in and just get a, drop, a small drop of the uh, head cement on our needle and come in and just touch that right on the side of the head and allow that to soak in. If you get a little too much on there and it plugs up the eye of the hook, you can come in just with your fingernail and hit that a couple of times to help free that material so that you can get your tippet and your leader through there. So this is a, a completed brassy, and again, it's a great fly that, that catches a lot of fish, but there's a lot of good basic techniques to get you started for some of the things that we'll continue to, to build upon as we go through the, the remainder of the show.